What's up, everybody? My name is Lehua, and welcome to the Superfina channel. I am a Hawaii variety content creator, host of podcasts across worlds, and I stream on twitch.tv slash Lehua Today, we are reviewing Tsukimichi, and if you like anime reviews, don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell so you can be notified on the next upload. And if you'd like to support the channel, we got channel membership and Patreon. Links to those are below. We are reviewing Tsukimichi episode 6. The title of the episode was the melancholy of Handsome Middle Aged Man. And the only middle aged man we knew was the one who requested for the ruby eyes from the previous episode. The company was called Rembrandt, Rembrandt Trading Company, I believe it was called. And the guy who owns the company, he actually requested the ruby eyes to make a ambrosia potion to cure a level eight disease for his wife and daughters. The last episode had a cliffhanger with him telling Makoto that he was doing things wrong and it totally sounded like he was going to rip Makoto off like he's just gonna tell him that he did things wrong he's gonna take the ruby eyes but it turns out that he assumed Makoto was going to use the ruby eyes to make a connection with him via merchant wise trading and he thought that Makoto was in over his head he's like you know you you're doing things wrong. You don't have to do it like this. The thing is, Makoto was explaining that he's an E-rank adventurer, a level one, and he wants to do this quest for him. <laughs> and he, the guy who owns the Rembrandt company, he's like, yeah, no, I don't think you can do this. Like, I know you want to work with me, but no, this is wrong. You, <laughs> and Makoto's he knew this was going to happen, so he's like, oh, here you go. And he shows him the ruby eyes, and then that's when he explained why he wanted the ruby eyes, and then they're like, oh, okay, we're going to need to make it into a potion. And then Makoto's like, oh, I know an alchemist. And then they're like, all right, this is going to be the first step. Two eyes makes one potion, and Makoto only showed them two eyes. And um, after they explained that, Makoto's like, oh, well, here, we got more. And then after that, Makoto actually went to the Merchant Guild to register and he has to take two tests. One is a writing test and the other one is a practical test. And the Merchant Guild is such a merchant guild. So they had a manual where you can study from and they said like, oh, in order to pass the test, you need to read through this manual or you can work through experience and gain that knowledge through experience, right? And Makoto's like, no, I can buy the manual. And the manual was expensive. Um, they thought he didn't have the money, but he did. You know, he did because he sold some goods from the produce from the demi plane. And he read the manual and he's like, this is it. And he took the test. Apparently, the stuff that was on the test was grade school level. And he's like wondering what the education system is like. And from there, I'm wondering if he's going to have like an education system in the demi plane. Mm hmm. Gonna educate our monsters, our demi humans, educate our demi humans. And then he did the practical one. And the practical one was actually going to be a lottery where he has to like, you know, pick something from a box and then it'll give him an idea what his test is going to be like what items is he have to does he have to bring back and such and it was high level items and he's like man i'm gonna have to get these items and then they explain well oh, if you take adventures level 50 and up um and get some items of equal value uh that should be fine and then he remembered what level all the adventures he was with when they were riding the wagon to Tsuge. And he's like, wait, really? these guys were like level 100 and up. So he just shows the items that he got on their trip. And they they accepted it. And they were just mind blown. Now the thing is, if I remember correctly, when I read the manga a while back, they were giving Makoto a hard time. Like they didn't believe him. Like I think they made him redo things. Or there's one that was so prideful of the test that he couldn't believe Makoto completed it. And he made Makoto redo it or something like that. He was giving Makoto a hard time. But in this episode, he was just like mind blown. And he was even 
instead of being mad that the test he made was passed so easily, he was proud to gain someone like Makoto into the guild. Like, he was looking at Makoto, he's the new golden boy to represent the guild or something like that. If you noticed that the novel or the manga was different from the anime, let me know in the comments below. And then after that, Makoto went to eat at a restaurant, and the food was bad, so he went to the demi plane because the demi plane had better food and such. And there he was talking to the mini version of Tomoe, and she was telling Makoto that the weather's been temperamental. And Makoto's like, I'm gonna need to figure out what's going on. Now, the thing is, didn't Makoto make the demi plane? Isn't that demi plane made after his thoughts and such? Doesn't he control the weather? I'm wondering if the weather's reflecting his mind because he has been having dark moments so maybe the snow is a reflection of that anyways he's still talking to chibi version of tomoe and he's talking about illusory city it sounds like it's illusion but it's illusionary city i'm not too sure how to pronounce that word if you know how please let me know in the comments i would love to say it correctly so he's talking about that and the purpose of this is to let everybody else in the world know their products from the demi plane because if they're gonna try sell the produce the items you know the items that the dwarves making one not the really good ones if he tries to sell them then some people are going to be like oh we don't know what these are we can't sell them or it's going to cause some friction with other traders merchants and such so what he wants to do makoto plans to have adventurers go into the mist go into the city and have the demi humans gift items <laughs> to the adventurers and the adventurers when they go back to the other towns and such they'll say oh look what i got and they'll get the locals used to those items they'll be like oh what's this and then they'll be able to look at it good and appraise it and analyze and appreciate how awesome these items are <clears throat> and want more so he's pretty much going to use the adventurers as advertisers I think this is really funny because this is what happens in RPG games. You go to a city, you discover items that are special to that city. <laughs> and then you go to like the basic ones and they don't have it because the ones you got from the special city are high grades and whatnot. So I think this is awesome. I totally think that Makosa took this from his video game that he played before. It's fabulous. Then Makoto gets called to the vault. The vault is where all his memories are. The demi-humans look through his memories to get an idea how to make the buildings and such. And maybe some other items. Well, Mia was there. She was there to translate his memories so the demi-humans could actually understand what's going on. Because his memories are in Japanese, right? Apparently, Tomoe was supposed to do that. But, you know, she was doing her thing, her samurai training. And then she's kind of fooling around at the same time. Mia was translating. And then Mia discovered anime. So she has an obsession of that. And she was fighting with Tomoe. Asking her to translate the rest of the episodes of the anime. And I think this is hilarious. Because now both Tomoe and Mia have an obsession with TV shows from Makoto's memories. I'm just wondering how are the anime shows going to influence Mio because Tomoe is heavily influenced by them. And the last thing I want to talk about from the episode is that there's this guy that's keeping tabs on Makoto. So in the beginning of the episode, this guy, he was like, oh, who took the quest for the Rembrandt company? And he's been telling Makoto. And at the end of this episode, he learns that Makoto has had all the red eyes he got the alchemist, they're about to make the ambrosia potion that will cure the disease. And this guy, for some reason, he doesn't want the owner of the Rembrandt company to get this potion. I don't know why, because it's to, it's to save his wife and daughter's lives are at stake. And this guy is supposed to be an adventurer. Maybe he has like issues with him. 
maybe he was related to the witch doctor because the witch doctor is the one who cursed uh, the guy's wife and daughters. Now, the other thing is Tomoe and Mia were talking about the owner of the Rembrandt company and they're saying like, oh, it's too good to be true. He's um, well known. He has, he's credible. People like him. He has a good reputation. But Tomoe looks like she's really suspicious of him. I'm wondering if there is a reason why the witch doctor cursed his wife and daughters. And I'm wondering if there's a reason why this adventurer doesn't want the potion to be made. Why he wants the owner to suffer and such. Maybe the owner did some stuff and now there's these consequences and whatnot. But I don't think the wife and daughters should, you know, be affected by this. I mean, I think they're innocent. I don't think they deserve this. From what we saw at the ending of this episode, it looks like on the next one, Makoto is going to have to deal with the adventurers that are trying to stop the Rembrandt company making the Ambrosia Potion. And that's my review of Tsukimichi episode 6. If there's anything that I missed, please let me know in the comments below. If you haven't seen the episode from this video, what's your impression so far? And if you want to talk outside of YouTube, there's a Discord link is in the description. I also stream on twitch.tv slash like post superfina. If you watch these videos, do you like to stop by the stream? Outside of YouTube and Twitch, I host podcasts across worlds where we talk about anime, manga, and other things you're interested in. If you like podcasts like that, link to the podcast is in the description. We're available on all platforms. Other than that, my name is Leihua, and this is the Superfina channel reviewing Tsuki Michi episode 6. Hope you guys like this video, and I'll see you on the next one. Laters! Huge thanks to my Patreons and channel members for making this video possible. If you also want to be part of the Superfina party, you can click over here or become a channel member. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next video. And I do stream live on Twitch every Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Hope to see you guys there, and I will see you on the next video. This bump.